work on the decks of ships with sailors and in the field with marines. They advise with admirals and generals, consult with officers and enlisted, making sure the United States Navy and Marine Corps will always have the lead in cutting edge technology. They're called science advisors. They work for the Office of Naval Research Global. This is their story. Science advisors report to major Navy and Marine Corps commands worldwide, focused on delivering what the warfighters need and developing new technologies for all domains of naval warfare, including air, ocean surface, subsurface, and expeditionary. When I think about the mission of the Navy Marine Corps team, I think about the honor, courage, and commitment of the sailors and Marines we have the privilege of serving, but also the need for technical dominance that comes from places like the Office of Naval Research, our lab partners, as well as industry and academia. Science advisors play a vital role in understanding the needs and challenges of the commanding group that they're, uh, they're representing, but they also have an understanding of the technical complexities of the challenge set and really are there to bring the full force and backing of the Office of Naval Research and our partners. The development of new science and technology is at the core of the Office of Naval Research, or ONR, and its international arm, ONR Global. And ONR Global Science Advisors are at the center of the action. They are the eyes and ears of the warfighter. Science Advisors is basically the lifeline between the operators and the S&T community. They're the link between the problem sets of the Navy and Marine Corps and the S&T community, the developers, who create solutions for those problem sets. Our job is to be a liaison between the Naval Research and Development Enterprise, basically between the scientists and engineers that are working on future capabilities for the fleet. So as a liaison, we have information flowing back and forth. Science advisors are really important on staff because they have the time and the bandwidth to dedicate themselves to figuring out what those upcoming technologies that are real game changers to the fleet are. Sometimes it requires us to do technical scouting. Um, other times it, it really requires us to get in there with the warfighters, with the sailors and the Marines, and make sure that we're helping them to develop capabilities and technologies to win the next fight. One exercise where science advisors played a key role was at the International Maritime Exercise in Bahrain. We're conducting fleet experiments, technology showcase of emerging maritime capabilities to our partners. It also creates a great opportunity for Department of Navy science and technology organizations to showcase and fleet experiment their technologies directly with the warfighters. ONR participated in Autonomous Warrior in Australia. This event brought together Australian military allies, industry and international partners to strengthen capabilities in undersea warfare. Really, it's a joint effort between the systems that ONR has worked on and has been delivered to the, to the fleet, and we're actually demonstrating that system. They wanted to use this capability, the XFAB, which is a 3D manufacturing capability that was actually within the three Marine Expeditionary Force organization. We've made medical tools, we've made various different hinges, latches, several different propellers and impellers. It is able to get weapon systems back in a fight. The sky is the limit when it comes to this equipment and what it's able to do and how it's able to help these Marines. Technical concept experiment held at Marine Corps Base Camp Pendleton demonstrated ONR-sponsored technologies designed to enhance the Marine Corps' capabilities in carrying out amphibious operations. Explosive hazard detect and defeat from deep water all the way through beach zones to enable naval maneuver. The scope of the science advisor role is literally all warfighting functions from personnel, intel, operations, logistics, um, all the way from a individual Marine, all the way up to the highest levels of joint operations. It is 100% coverage across everything. This really is the greatest job in the Navy. 
We get to do anything from researching a white paper to figure out whether or not that technology is actually what it says it is, to going out to an operational exercise and assessing the end state of some of those technologies in the field. If you're looking for the thrill of engagements, opportunity to push the Navy and the Marine Corps to new heights, then we want you as a science advisor. If you have a, a passion, a dedication, um, the, the honor, courage, and commitment that it takes to work with our most junior sailors and Marines, all the way up to our most senior flag officers, uh, those admirals and generals that can really affect the future force for the Navy and the Marine Corps, then we want you as a science advisor. Our ability to maintain our advantage is all about innovation. It's all about getting innovative technologies and accelerating those technologies into the hands of the warfighter so that we can maintain our advantage. And science advisors are really at the forefront of that effort. Science advisors come from diverse backgrounds. Many are engineers who have worked at Naval Warfare Centers. They serve a three-year term, bringing new technologies to bear for America's sailors and Marines. I love this job. It's the, it's the best job I've ever had. What I love the most about it is being able to um, you know, work side by side with our uniform personnel. I see it as my duty to make sure that I'm helping them with the technologies that they, they, they need today as well as those that they'll need in the future. More than anything, the best part of being a science advisor is seeing the changes that you are fighting so hard for actually occurring in the fleet while you're in the seat. If you feel that burning desire that some of us have to make a difference and make our forces more lethal, more ready, that's why you should join. You're gonna be able to do that in this job. I have had the uh, pleasure to serve alongside a number of science advisors throughout my career. And universally, each one of them have expressed to me how uh, pivotal and energizing and inspiring it was for them to serve in that capacity, to help our forces in the field understand what technology can provide to them and connect back to the greater Navy organizations such as ONR and our other partners to help find solutions and bring them to the force. There's no better way than having a scientist or engineer at the point of need with the commander in the field.